Let's play it. You're just gonna have to trust me. Trust me. Cause I am... I just can't Like this bit right here, personally, is my favorite part of the entire remix. So let's talk about it. So first things first, a bit of a reverse kick and then actually the like I'm reversing and then we play the actual kick. And if we take a look at what the kick actually is, well, I should probably click the pattern first. Uh, cymatics kick. And I've also got this camel crusher, but it's turned off right now. And it turns on during the drop because I want the kick to hit hard right now, but I want it to hit even harder when the actual drop comes in. Vocals, same deal, but again, this was the part that I was telling you about where it gets really loud, which is why I needed to do all of that processing to make sure that it wasn't crazy loud. I should probably turn these on, and basically this is a plugin called M Tremolo. M Tremolo, as well as a bunch of other effects by these same guys, Melda, production audio is completely free. I mean, it even says it is free, but please upgrade if you can and make this disappear. And as you can tell, I, I have not upgraded. I, I'm taking it for free. Thank you very much. But I, I appreciate it. It's a, it's a good, it's a good plugin because the way this works is that like kind of LFO thing. That's what this does, except it makes it really easy. And I could use automation, like, like normal automation clips and turn the LFO on and adjust the rate. But this makes it so, so much easier to work with. So with this on, on the vocal, it sounds like this. And I just love that effect of where it starts off really fast and, and slows down. And I hope you guys digged that as well, or dug that as well, I should say. And then we've got these corns. Two layers. This one's only called reverse because I had originally just had it for these reverses. And then when I put in the uh, chord layer, I didn't bother to change the name. So this first layer. I bounced out for uh, CPU's sake. Um, and it's probably not even going to work when I try and play it, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, take a look up here and see how funny it gets. As you can tell, it's uh, kind of struggling with uh, playing these chords. Uh, I don't know why the CPU isn't saying like 120, because it's clearly struggling. So, I mean, I don't know. But uh, luckily, I've bounced them out so I can play them. But if we want to actually look at how they're made... Um, really, it's just a ton of layers. We've got normal saw, and then, like, this saw square combo amalgamation. And then we've got this wave table. And more layers. The difference between this one and this one, and the reason why it takes so much CPU is, first of all, because there's so many layers. The other great thing about phase plant, by the way, that I didn't even mention is that you can have as many modulators or effects or... Uh, layers or le like generators as you want, which I couldn't, I could not do this in serum. I mean, I could do it if I had like 20 serum patches, but look, it's all here in one phase plant patch, which is just glorious. I know I have two, but uh, this, that's because this one I had already made. So I just loaded that one in. But the difference between this one and this one is that this one's panned to the left and this one's panned to the right to make it extremely wide. And then here we've got this layer as well. And then noise. And what this is, well, obviously you guys know what reverb does, but this slice EQ, basically what it's doing, I know it looks pretty intense, but this is just boosting. So this is mid side EQ. So this is boosting the highs in the middle and this is boosting the highs in the side. And what you get as a result is that is when the EQ of the sides are different from the EQ of the mids, your ears distinguish between them more easily and the sound sounds 
wider. And I want this to be as wide as possible, so of course I'm going to do that. Um, and then I've got, I know this looks like a pretty wacky EQ shape, but that's just because these points were the main points where the vocal was, and I didn't want this to like completely squash the vocal and make it inaudible. So I did some modest uh, cuts, or not necessarily cuts, but like I, I reduced it at those points. And then at the second one, like I said, this one is just a separate one because I had already made this one. And you can see that this one's extremely uh, beefy. I've got, I mean, I'm really using all of the, what phase plant had, I mean, I'm not using the modulators, but at least in terms of the effects section, section, I'm using much more of what phase plant has to offer. Chorus, distortion, no TT, of course, Haas. Um, if you don't know what Haas effect is, basically it delays one of the sides so that, um, it, the sound sounds wider because like if the left played slightly after the right then again your ears distinguish between them more and it sounds much wider and these aren't just going into each other these are three different effect chains then we've got you know more ha stuff um some slice eq action some reverb because this one we've got an extremely wide stack this one is in mono or at least was originally in mono i've got haas in it so not anymore but what I mean to say is that there's no detune, right? And these, unlike the other one, there's no wavetables or anything. It's just saws and squares and a triangle here, a few triangles. And then I've got this one where it's up another octave and then up another two octaves and then noise. So you can see why my CPU is having trouble, right? Because this is, this is no joke. So you know that I'm putting as much as I can into these chords because I really want them to be extremely wide. And also, if you're wondering what it's doing at the end, I'm also, another part of this automation is that I'm automating the, um, the reverb so that as it, as the uh, tremolo slows down, then you've got that reverb washing in. So it feels all very nice and smooth. And then this other layer to the chords. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this other layer is not actually a, a, a layer at all. It's for the vocoding, so I'll talk about that when we get to that part. Then we've got, of course, the bass. But yeah, this is the same bass that we've had in the whole song, so nothing new there. And then for even more impact, of course, we're going to run these effects. This one's the one that we've seen throughout the entire song, that sweep down, except... I've pitched it up because normally it sounds like this and here it sounds like this and then we've got this one another cashmere sample just giving this as much impact as possible because this is the moment well and the drop is the moment but you know so all together I just can't. So now let's talk about this. First things first, just the vocal. Every word I say. And here, this is um, feeding the uh, note information to the vocodex. And I know it looks like I've got a lot here because I, I, I do. Uh, I've got the vocodex, of course. We're going to have that. Um, some wacky uh, EQ. I'm, I'm sure it's because it sounds good. Uh, wave Shaper, pulling that up. Stereo Enhancer, trying to make it really nice and wide. Super Massive, running the reverb. Again, I don't know why it keeps snapping to 300. Um, and yeah, so then this with the vocals, you're going to hear... the. Actually, let me just even take out the normal vocal so that you only hear the vocoder. And this isn't just for this section, actually. These vocals... Like, this vocoding goes on throughout the entirety of this.
right? So that whole thing's being vocoded. And um, if we look at what I'm actually feeding into the vocodex, it's really, really simple. It's just detune saw with no TT, because I mean, it's a sound, so obviously it's going to have no TT on it, am I right? And when I play it with the uh, vocals on it, then you can hear kind of how they mesh together. Cause I... I just can't clean up my act and send it away. Cause sometimes love says what I'm thinking of. Other words say tucked away. But I really mean it, though you don't feel it. But yeah, the vocode is on throughout the whole thing, but it's only noticeable well it's not unnoticeable in the other parts but it's especially noticeable in this part Every word I say. but we've also got this going on Every word I say. this is just because i made the uh, input play an extremely low note and then i just rendered it out Every word I say. and then this i took that and then just took the base of that let me see if I still have the processing. Yeah, I do. I pitched it down two octaves. Took everything but the sub frequencies. Went hard on the wave shaper. Like if I take this out, uh, it originally sounded like this. But then with the processing, it actually sounds like a sub. Right? And then this together. Every word I say. You've got that low, really neat ta uh, timbre that you can only really get with a vocoder. Every word I say. But also a sub that's following the vocals. Combine that with what we already have and you get. Every word I say. And I mean, I just think that that's really cool. Something that I had almost forgotten to mention was that originally it was just going to be the chord hits. There was no tremolo initially that, like, yeah, there wasn't going to be any, like, tremolo. So uh, I'm very glad that I added that, albeit a bit last minute, because I really like how it sounds. And the other thing that I added last minute was the sub here. And again, I, I like that I added it because I think it adds a lot between this. Every word I say and Every word I, say. I definitely think it makes a big difference. So now let's keep playing it. I don't introduce anything new, but I can talk about um, like how I have these drum hits. But again, it's the same kick as before. Like all the sounds are the same, um, except over here. And I'll talk about that. Just... I... I just can't clean up my heart and send it away. But one thing that I realized, wait, there's something else that I need to talk about, is this. Basically what this is doing is I've got this filter on here that's doing a high pass, but since I'm turning on the resonance, it's picking up on like certain like pitches um, that give it and, it, and it's kind of like accentuating those, just, you know, making them pop out a lot more, which is bringing in, you know, newer kind of like melodic, like newer kind of notes are becoming more prevalent, which gives it kind of like a new sound melodically. And if I leave this up here, you can see visually what it's doing. Right, so by turning this uh, this cue up, the resonance up, you can see, especially here, the sound that it gives. Versus if I have um, this turned off, you'll hear the difference.
right there it just sounds like a high pass but here it actually is you know making the sound uh i don't know like a lot richer i don't, I don't really know what's the right word to use for this but you you can hear what it's doing um so we've got that and i'll, I'll just play this again Cause I am I just can't in my heart and sound it away. Cause sometimes life says what I'm thinking of. All the words that you talk to it. But I really mean it. All right. Uh, the other thing that I had forgotten to mention is that I also have this to fill up the space. Right, just having it reverse back, you know, that reverb can really help fill out some of the empty gaps. Um, the other thing worth noting, I mean, we can take a look at the chords here. You can see that after this point, the bass never gets in the, uh, the two octave range, or however you would call it. Um... So this is high for the sub, like it doesn't really punch there, but that's intentional because if I make it not punch as hard here, then when we hit to the drop and it's actually in its proper place, then that's going to hit a lot harder. So I can keep the sub, but by making it higher, I make the, uh, the drop more impactful. Uh, it's kind of a similar idea of not introducing the sub in the intro, except I actually have the sub. It's just not at its full potential, right? Um... These drums, I mean, it's, it's the same kick, just going faster. There's no, like, snare or anything that's um, doing anything. It's here. It's just the kick for the drums. Um, and then, yeah, looking over here, I've got this riser that I made. And it's just <laughs> it's just three X oscillator just pitching up. So I mean, I, I I probably shouldn't even say that I made it. It's just uh, pitching up a three X oscillator. And it gets pretty high, which is obnoxious on its own. But with everything else, then you know, it can add to what's going on. And then I've got this effect, which is, um, this is literally just the sweep down that we've seen in, throughout the entire um, track, except reversed. And then we've got this one, which is just a cashmere sample. where it's like a white noise mixed with a crowd cheering, which, you know, it's pretty nice. And then finally, we're on the drop. It's been a three-hour recording so far, and we, we finally get to talk about this part. And before I even play it, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. When we take a look at the chords that play here, I think it's these. Yeah. Look at this. Look at how beautiful this is. This is the one chord. This is the harmonic resolution that I've been talking about this whole breakdown. It's here. We finally got that resolution. And I wanted to make it as satisfying as possible. So yes, we got a huge impact here. But I mean, how long was it? Four minutes nearly. Of, of teasing you, talking about, you know, getting real close to doing that resolution at one point, kind of resolving, but only with like one note and not like the whole chord, right? But then here, I'm, I mean, you've earned it for listening this far. I'm giving you that resolution and I'm going to try and make it as satisfying as possible for you. Let's play this drop.
right? And honestly, I know it's a pretty short drop because the timing of it was kind of weird of how I wanted to go about it. So yeah, it ended up being kind of short, but I'm still, I'm still certainly happy with it. And another thing is that you'll notice that the drop is really loud because from the beginning of this to the end of the buildup, I'm turning this way down. I'm actually going, um, let's see. So we start at negative four and we end at negative nine. We're going and then now granted, we don't go back up to negative four. I actually had to make the drop quieter, but this is over a three decibel difference. And I mean, that's, that's going to be a big difference to you. So that's why the drop is, uh, you know, has, has so much volume behind it. And boom, that glorious, glorious resolution. Now let's talk about this drop, all right? Starting with the drums, kick is the same as before, but like I mentioned, I'm turning on that uh, camel crusher. So before, after, a lot thumpier. Uh, and if we play the whole thing, let's talk about the snare. The snare has two layers. First one's just a cymatic sample, but a ton of processing without any of it. Right, and if we take a look at what we're doing here, uh, first things first, bringing the highs up. Then, giving it a ton of reverb before, after. Right, that like that's a lot of reverb. Then, distortion. Then, more EQ, just shaping the sound a little bit more. Leaning into that kind of peak there. And then finally, just a wave, uh, a wave shaper to keep it below that zero decibel mark. And then we've got this other layer that I use a ton as well. I know I used it in Restless. I don't know about any of my other tracks, but it's definitely in most of the ones that I'm working on that have heavy snares. And it's this miscellaneous snare, which is a combination of a handful of snares, but the biggest one is a snare from AU5 sample pack, and that's what's doing the tail. Because this, uh, you notice, if I take off all the effects and I play it, there's no body to it. It's really just that uh, tail, which is why it works really well as a, a top snare, like a tail, because I love the like timbre of this tail. So before, after, and then here when we're talking about uh, these guys, no processing aside from a bit of distortion. And as you can tell, these are just all, I didn't even rename, rename them or anything. It's just cymatic samples. Rides going like this. Uh, open hat, closed hat, another closed hat, crash. So all together. Um, and then this one's different as well. And I used a different kick, a, a much softer one. Or not necessarily softer, but I normally it sounds like this. Very beefy. But uh, then I basically only took like the initial hit of it. Because when I'm playing so many of these so fast, if I take like the full kick, then it will be way too much. Um, so yeah, that's that. Then we've got these vocals. I just repitched it, um, chopped it up how I wanted, and did some pitch slides as you can tell over here, and it ended up like this. Every Then we've got the chords here. I mean, I've already gone over the chords, but I'll just play them. And then again, reverses to fill the gaps. Extremely wide, extremely big. And you know that I'm holding on to that resolution for quite a bit because I want to let you guys enjoy it. 
then base same deal as uh before nothing new here And as you can see here, like like I said last time in the buildup, at, at by the end of the buildup, it was never going below the C sharp three. But now that I'm bringing it down to you know like the A F E, it has much more thump, and that helps it shine much more, because we didn't have that in the buildup. So you know it it has even more impact when we bring it in for the drop. And then a few new elements. Uh, three new elements and then a few repeats. I'll go through the repeats first. Brass. Right, just doing its thing. <clears throat> and these effects. Again, this is our good friend, the Sweep Down 10, the one that I've been using throughout the entirety of this remix. Then we've got this guy that I hadn't used before, it's just a, a cymbal crash, also from the cashmere pack. And then this one. An exhaust, which I might have used before, I don't remember. Then, we've got this violin, which I know we used a violin earlier when we layered it with the cello in the second chorus, remember that? But this is a different violin. Without processing, sounds like this. And then with processing. And I know you might be thinking, wow, that, I mean, you had me at the beginning, but that pitch slide doesn't sound realistic at all. And you, you'd be right. But it's acting as a layer to the vocal. And that's kind of, so I'm not too worried about it sounding realistic. Because the, the quote unquote realistic, like organic part is over here. This is just purely electronic. Right, so we've got that. Uh, we've got this crowd noise, which is just, this is kind of doing the same thing that the ocean Ambience was doing back here, which is just filling out frequencies. In fact, even if I if I go to the uh, ocean ambience, that's really just kind of this in essence, but just softer and uh, more in like the low side of the frequency spectrum. And this is from um, one of Jordis Aiden's free packs, if you guys know him. Right, and then last thing is we've got this choir here, which is from Cashmere, but I'm using a bunch of different ones because I need to hit the right chords. And I mean, it just acts as a really, really nice layer because with the chords by itself, and then with the choir, Definitely filling out on like the the mid and yeah, those are all the uh, aside from this part that I'll talk about in just a moment But otherwise those are all the elements Uh, so the other, the only other thing that I need to talk about is this guy. So it's two layers. First one, this is from the uh, AU5 sample pack, but it's pretty heavily processed. If I go to the original sample and play it, it sounds like this. So you can still hear where it comes from, like it's not unrecognizable. But that definitely sounds very different from this. And uh, if we take a look at the processing that's on it, it already sounds pretty different just because it's repitched, but then if we look at the uh, individual uh, processing, first thing's distortion, and then low cut, and then finally no TT, of course. And then on the bus, we've got some wacky EQ and uh, wave shaper. 
right? Then the other layer is this guy. And doesn't that sound interesting? It's actually made from the exact same sample. And if I turn off the processing though, well, now you can kind of hear it. Like it sounds like that, but like cut really small, which is what it is. Let's talk about these one at a time. The first one that's making the biggest difference is definitely the vocodex. Without it, and then with, I mean, completely changes the timbre. It's not, normally when you think about vocoding, it's like, okay, we're taking this one sound, and then we're taking these chords, and then we're making that sound follow these chords. But this doesn't have any of that. There's no modulator, there's no carrier. It's just the artifacts of the vocodex imprinted onto this growl. And I think that, you know, it doesn't always sound good, but I think for this one, it sounds really cool. Then we've got this frequency shifter. I don't know if you guys knew this, but FL Studio added a frequency shifter. This is one of their newest plugins. It's not making a huge, huge difference, but I mean, that's there. If you guys want to mess around with it, get some cool results. Obviously, no TT is the solution to all things. Except not fully, because I still wanted to add some distortion, uh, bring some of that crunch back. Yeah, when I turn these back on, you get a very nice, clean sound. That sounds really cool, in my opinion, at least. And for this one, if I tell you this comes from this, I mean, that's pretty different. That's, that's certainly transformative. And when I put these two together, here's just this one. And then together. And yeah, that's it. That's the entire drop. It's not the entire track, because I still have to talk about this. But that, that's the drop for you. And now let's talk about this. So these vocals, I mean, same thing. No new processing or anything. Like the processing from the beginning holds throughout. The only difference is here when I do some vocoding. Um, here's just the tail, like the reverb tails of everything that's playing. I don't even have any imp uh, impacts or anything. I want this to be a very soft ending. Because when we're talking about the impactful bit here, like right here, juxtaposing with the really quiet, uh, well, not necessarily, well, it is much quieter, certainly, for sure. But also, you know, much less full, so that this one sounds much more impactful. That juxtaposition I'm using, but in the opposite direction. Like this super huge um, drop with a lot of punch, and then suddenly cutting it out and going to a really soft ending to kind of throw you off guard, but also to hit you with a very nice ending. And uh, this piano is just Keyzone. If you don't know what Keyzone is, I mean, I, I've talked about, I, I brought up Keyzone earlier, but I didn't talk about the plugin itself. It's a free piano plugin, and probably the nicest free piano plugin that I know. I, I like the Labs Soft Piano as well, but Labs isn't a piano plugin. So as far as free piano plugins go, this one's probably my favorite. It has a pretty, I mean, it's not perfect or anything, but I think it definitely did the job for this outro here. And as for this, I know it seems like a kind of crazy uh, MIDI. But I mean, this is that resolution. I mean, obviously, I already gave you that resolution in the drop. That was like the huge, huge moment. So this isn't as big. But of course, I want to end this remix on a nice, resolved note. Because I feel like that's kind of what no matter... Well, I mean, I'm not going to speak for him. But at, at least from the impression I got from the original... You know, th there were some hoops you had to jump over, but there was a nice, happy ending, right? Nice, you know, resolved kind of feeling at the end of it. And I definitely wanted to have that in this remix. So this is just basically going up D major, going up, but with an extra E here. And then that C sharp, that leading tone, that really wants to go to the D. So then you can get that very nice resolution. And then this is just... D major chord on a ton of octaves, one, two, three, four, and then an extra uh, D up there. And then one down here, an extra hit, just because I thought it sounded nice. 
So this pattern sounds like this. And boom, that's the entirety of the remix. I mean, at least I hope that there's not anything that uh, I meant to cover that I forgot to. If you have any questions or anything, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll respond to them the best I can in, in text format or in the comments. And yeah, if, if you watch the whole thing, I mean, I've been recording for nearly three and a half hours here. But I'm, don't, I really don't want it to be nearly that long when I, all, when I cut the whole thing down. But I don't know how long it's going to be. But if you watch the whole thing, I mean, you're a legend. Thank you. And, and let me know that you watch the whole thing so that I can, I can thank you, right? Because um, I appreciate that a whole ton. And if you really enjoyed it, please, please let me know. And I'll, I'll do more of these when I release more music. And yeah, I mean, thank you. I know it. I've only put out two tracks um, this year, but I, I can promise you I'm, I'm working on a lot of new stuff. And, and yeah, uh, here's to hoping that I'm able to get a lot of stuff out next year. Um, cause yeah, I want, I want you guys to be able to hear the stuff that I'm, that I'm working on. I just want to make sure that it's, you know, completely dialed in before I put it out. Anyways, thank you guys so much. And, um, uh, until next time.